guys, Shelby Smith with Jiminy Crickets. Today I'm going to talk to you about one of the more common questions I get about pinheads and their hatching and that whole process. And that is, how do you get the pinheads out of the actual breeding tray? What do you do? So this answer might be sort of uh, unsatisfying for some people, but for the most part, I don't really do anything. Uh, I will take you, I'll, we'll take apart an incubator, I will show you what the hatching pin heads look like, and I will show you the way that I collect them. There's not anything super special that I do, like I don't uh, blow on them or anything like that. I just let them hatch and come out. Alright guys, so we are back at my incubator section right here. Uh, so these guys, most of them are hatching or just starting to hatch. So what I do once the pinheads have started to hatch out, I usually wait 24-ish hours from when I see the very first pinhead. The very first pinheads that come out are, are sort of your early starters. Typically, it's not going to be worth your while and worth your labor necessarily to start sorting those pinheads out. In the first, when you first notice your first pinheads coming out, I would say in those next 12 hours, you're looking at maybe a couple hundred pinheads, depending on how dense your eggs are, how closely together they were laid. All of these factors play into how quickly they hatch, but typically for me, what I've noticed, it takes about 24 hours for the hatch to really start to hit a critical mass. For me to actually do anything with them. So I usually wait 24 hours after I see the first pinheads emerge and then we start taking them out and collecting them to be put in their bins. Now when our eggs are really densely laid, so this typically happens way more in the summer than it does in the winter because the crickets themselves just sort of slow down in the winter as do most insects. It's an internal inherent uh, circadian rhythm that even if you control for everything, Everything still slows down in the winter. Don't ask me why, I'm not a biologist, I don't understand. It's just something that I have observed and something that other folks have talked about before. So, um, once we are, but sorry, back to what I was saying before. When we are in the summer and we have our hatches happening very rapidly, we have to address our pinheads multiple times a day sometimes as often as every two hours because they are hatching so quickly and so thick that if we leave them in their bins for longer than that they end up doing what i call as carpeting where it literally looks just like a full layer of little baby crickets you run into massive suffocation issues and huge mortality rates if you allow that to happen for too long so when mega hatches are happening, we are doing this sometimes, like I said, as frequently as every two hours until it starts to slow down a little bit. But how we actually get the pinheads out of the physical breeding tray, so out of the actual trays like this, is we simply separate them out. We separate them out from the from the incubators. We take everything out and we have at the bottom of our incubators, we have egg flats, egg cartons, paper towel, um, that the pinheads eventually, when they hatch out, they come out of those things. We separate them out, we put them back in, and we do that, like I said, uh, if they're hatching very frequently, we will do that multiple times a day. If they are hatching a little slower like they are right now, partly because our barn is at a lower temperature and partly because it is winter, um, our hatches happen slower right now, so we don't have to address it quite as many times per day. I'm going to set up the tripod and show you exactly how we do it. And I'm going to show you and talk about some other things you can do um, to maybe speed up the process of them getting out, but I'm also going to tell you what you need to look out for if you decide to go for these other things. So stick around. All right, so the best way for me to show you exactly how we get the pinheads out is 
for me to show you how we get the pinheads out. So I'm gonna demonstrate in with one of our incubator bins of how we separate the pinheads from the um, from the the trays themselves. Uh, again, I I don't do anything special other than move things around. It'll make more sense once I do it. Just here, watch. So this is our incubator full of breeding trays. I get two um, containers, set them next to each other, and then all I do is I take the trays out and stick them into one of the bins. And then at that point, we just have the egg cartons and the paper towel underneath. And so I take those and I knock them off into another bin. Those on top of those. Shake the paper towel. And that essentially is how we collect the pin heads. There's not very many hatching out of those anymore. Um, they are 15 days, 16 days uh, post lay right now. So they are basically hatched out as much as they're going to, but um, I just wanted to show you guys a demonstration of how we typically do that. So another question that comes up fairly commonly is, do you blow on the trays to get the pin heads out? Sometimes a little bit, but generally not very much. And the reason I don't is if any of you have ever tried blowing on a, pin, a tray full of pinheads, you know that it uh, can become a mess quite quickly. Those pinheads are so light that they will fly everywhere. If you have long hair and your hair is down, you will be taking pinheads home because they will get in your hair. Um, or if your substrate is dry enough, which is, is often the case, like if I blew on any of these, um, any of these trays right now, it would, it would blow substrate dust everywhere as well. So uh, you can do it. You, like I said, you can, can do it just uh, with your own wind, if you will, or if you wanted to do some sort of like a low pressure air compressor, you could do that to try and get them out. But honestly, the easiest, most efficient way for us has been to just do this method where we separate them out from the incubator, we take out the stuff in the bottom, shake them off, and then allow them to, to get out some more until the next time that we collect them. To each their own. If you want to go the air compressor route and do it that way, that's fine too. The other option, um, if you're on a smaller scale and you don't necessarily care about population per bin, efficiency, and all of those kind of things, is you could just take a, um, you could just take a full tray like this and stick it into the bin that, the housing bin, so one that you have completely set up. Just let them hatch out the way they're gonna hatch out. Whatever you get for population, you're totally happy with. You can do that as well. There's no need to necessarily collect them and measure them and dole them out accordingly. If you're on a smaller scale, that works too. This is just how we do it. Like I said, it's a question that comes up a lot. And honestly, it was a lot better for me to demonstrate it than for me to try and explain it verbally. And that is all I have for you today. Hopefully that was helpful. Like I said, that is one question that comes up super commonly for me when people are first getting into the breeding the crickets and go through their first round with the pinheads and hatching the eggs is how the heck do we get them out and like i said the short answer is we don't we let them get out themselves so i hope this was helpful thank you so much for watching please give this video a thumbs up click that subscribe button below share with all of your friends thanks so much for being here guys